All right, what's going on, Tycoon? Super excited for today's video. We're going to be taking a look at ticker symbol uh, XL. This is XL Fleet. Um, all right, this is a viewer request. All right, um, I do viewer requests frequently. Um, and if you guys are ever curious about a stock or a crypto coin, anything like that, you would like me to chart up, um, analyze, give you my take on it with some technical analysis, let me know in the comment section below, okay? Um, what I like to do is I like to start out on the weekly chart, okay? And I'm going to uh, chart this all up for you live today, okay? I have not charted this um, since this time right here. Um, this is like July of last year, 2021. It was the last time I was looking at it for a day trade to try to see if this was a bull flag breakout here, um, but that did not happen, okay? So what I have is uh, basically right here, these lines are the uh, weekly, you know, major key support and resistance levels. All right. And if we look here on the weekly chart, which uh, is the best place I suggest to start um, when looking at a chart, right? You start at the weekly chart, start at the monthly chart, zoom in from there. Okay. Establish the major zones, the major support and resistance levels on those charts, and then zoom in to try to catch an uh, intraday or, you know, a smaller time frame sense of the direction of the stock. All right. Um, they have earnings coming up. There's supposedly a 96 uh, short squeeze score on XL. And they also recently have a new CEO. So um, really interesting to see what happens here. All right. So, um, you know, a lot of these levels, I just want to show you guys, they held support very long. You know, we traded right along this uh, support level here. Um, you know, for, for a very long time. And now that's our major resistance level. Okay. So, you know, when we run up, um, you know, I, I think it's going to be a while until we see this five ninety eight six dollars level. I mean, you know, if we look at, um, you know, where it's at currently up to there, up to that level, um, let's see what kind of percentage change that is. Yeah. That's about a 200% run up right there. So, you know, I don't expect us to go back up to six anytime soon, but on Reddit, you know, there is a lot of people pumping it to, uh, you know, saying that it's going to pump up to four, which would be, you know, a little over a hundred percent return right now. And if we see here on the daily chart, I have the 50 simple moving average, the hundred simple moving average and the uh, 200 simple moving average pulled up. All right. That's what these are right here. Um, you know, we bottomed out here at 170. Um, and, you know, it's still kind of looking flat. All right. I mean, we, you know, we're going down. The trend is definitely down. So you can't fight the trend. But, you know, a lot of these stocks, there's not much more room for them to drop. Right. I mean, let's let's be realistic. I mean, many of these are down 70, 80, 90 percent. Um, let's take a look at XL Fleet on the year chart. OK, exactly. You know, exactly one year from now. Uh, or yeah, one year ago from now, this, I mean, this stock is down 90%. What's it going to drop, you know, um, another 10% and go to zero. I mean, you know, if you're a long-term investor, right. In Excel fleet, and you think that this company is going to be around, um, and be a successful business for the next five years, a lot of people are paying attention to stocks like these now, right. These small caps, um, and, you know, these these stocks that got pushed down to penny stock prices, you know, there's stocks that were at twenty dollars. Now they're at two dollars. I mean, it's insane the kind of swing that we've seen in just a one year time period, you know. So who's going to actually step in? Right. I mean, retail traders like me and you, if you're watching this video, I don't care if you're a millionaire. You dumping a couple million into a stock isn't going to change the overall trend. Right. But what happens is market makers, the institutionalists, right? The hedge funds, all of these people, they have been shorting these stocks so much, you know, just trying to see how low they can drive the price. You know, I mean, they're like, hey, you know, we're not completely going to bury every single, you know, small cap and growth stock or, or whatever in the stock market. We're just trying to see how cheap we can get them to before we buy back in, right? Um, and it's been so easy lately with the whole inflation fears, uh, CPI data, inflation fears, jobs reports, everything. You know, there's FUD, 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 fear, uncertainty, doubt everywhere. And eventually we're going to get out of that cycle, OK, where eventually pain is going to end. And eventually, you know, we're going to go back into euphoria. It's not going to happen overnight. But what you need to pay attention to is 
is you need to you need to look at the volume, right? And once we see the volume getting above the volume moving average, and we see you know green getting above there, that's going to give us a very very clear sign that okay buyers are stepping into the market, right? And and it's gonna we're gonna have to see those buyers leave the market, okay? They're gonna have to there's gonna be have to uh, be like a huge increase in selling volume. Um, it, you know, if there's a huge increase in the buying volume for all those buyers to have gone away, right? So that's what we're waiting for. That's not what's happening yet with the XL fleet. But, you know, stocks like SPCE, we just saw massive volume step in today, right? I mean, that stock has been trading over $50 and it was, you know, it was less than $10 this morning. So, you know, we got like a 700% trade on SPCE day trade on call options for it. And you can watch that video in the top right hand corner. Um, you know, that's my SPCE video and also join the discord. Okay. Join the discord. The links in the description below. We got the day, uh, you know, every day you get, you know, entries, exits on whatever plays we're looking at. You get analysis. Um, it's a whole team. Okay. It's not just me. There's many professionals. People who have been trading for years and years, um, you know, that I respect very much. And, you know, they also respect my, uh, you know, respect me as well very much. And, you know, it's a team effort. All right. So now that we looked at the daily chart here, let's go down to the one hour chart and let's try to see what's going on with the volume wise. OK, so we look here and we can see these are our big, big spikes in volume. OK, so, you know, there's a big sell off here and then this candle, a lot of buyers stepped in. All right. And then at the end of the day, uh, you know, huge volume sell off right here and volume has died down since then. OK, so, um, you know, this this big drop right here was about a 15 percent drop roughly. And that was at our volume peak. All right. So what that means, basically, what I'm trying to tell you is that, you know, basically when the volume was at its highest, we saw a 15 percent drop. The volume has died off since then. All right. So, you know, once we see an extreme spike in volume again above the moving average, that's when you can expect to see a big move to the upside or to the downside. Right now, a lot of people are betting on the upside. So, you know, what you want to do is you want to slowly see, you know, buyers stepping in. All right. Um, and, you know, you want to see the, the volume on the uh, on the chart. You basically want to see, you know, the green above the moving average. Right. There's still lots of sellers in the market. Um, as you can see here, you know, uh, tons of volume here on the red candles. So that's my warning to everyone. OK, I'm not promoting this stock. I'm not pumping this stock. I'm just trying to give you guys um, some, you know, honest, genuine analysis. Um, what I would say right here, if I would have been trading this and would have been charting this, um, you know, this is a clear v, v shaped recovery, in my opinion. Um, and, you know, also maybe a little bit of a, a, you know, inverse head and shoulders on some smaller time frames. But, you know, we have a nice little V shape recovery right here. OK, you know, here's our sell off and then here's our recovery. So that's kind of my take on it right now. Um, you know, I'm, they do have earnings coming up. So actually, you know, let me go ahead and give you guys some some option plays to look at. All right. Um, I'm going to give you guys some option plays for the upside or the downside. And, um, you know, this is just because I'm, I'm unbiased. All right. I don't have a particular opinion on where this can go. But, you know, if you want to trade it, these are some things that you can go ahead and try to trade it on. Um, oh, whoops. Excel. All righty. So let's look here. The first thing you want to look at is, of course, uh, I'm preaching volume. We are looking at the volume and the open interest. Um, you know, open interest is how many of these contracts are, are you know, active, held um, by somebody, right? Some, so, the, you know, there's over a thousand for the two calls that expire February 18th, right? And we're about 12 cents away from the $2 strike mark. So really interesting, in my opinion, is going to be, does this thing close above two dollars before friday this week right that's the main thing that i think would be a good sign of uh future potential growth now a lot of these contracts you have to realize that what market makers do is they want to steal all your money because that's how they make money right they want to sell you all these call options 
um, or put options, whatever it is that will basically enable you to buy these and then expire worthless. Okay. We have the six strike here. There's 2000 of those contracts expired worthless. Okay. If you, if you, we try to buy one right now, um, you know, they're worth three to $5 a piece. And I'm sure, you know, at, at a, a, a given time in the past, these were worth, you know, $10 or more, um, you know, if not hundreds, right. Or $50 or hundreds. So, you know, that's one thing you have to maintain when you're looking at these, what I would recommend, what I feel a little more safer. Okay. Just from looking at some volume and open interest, if you are bullish, okay. On Excel fleet, um, you know, I would look at the, uh, you know, expiration date for March 18th. Okay. We have, uh, much higher open interest. There's 2,600 open interest. Um, the volume on it today was very significant. We had about 1,000 of those contracts traded. And you look at the volume for these, it, you know, on the whole entire day, it's only 40 contracts traded. So this kind of gives me some insight that, hey, the move may happen. There's a tiny percentage of people willing to, uh, you know, risk some money, risk some capital that, you know, it will go up above $2, you know, in the next by Friday. But there's a lot more people, right, betting that it will happen on before March 18th, right, giving themselves over 31 days on the contract expiration um, for these to either become in the money or, you know, etc. So if you want to go call options um, and day trade any call options or anything like that, uh, these are going to be your safest bet. Um, you know, the liquidity and the volume on these is much safer. Um, so you'll be able to buy in at these and sell out of these at a much better price that you actually want to versus, you know, buying an option that has no volume on the day. Um, and the bid ask spread is going to be pretty wide. All right. Um, now, if you are bearish on this, right, and you think that it's going to go, you know, lower, one thing I want you to keep in mind is the same thing that I've been talking about, the volume and the open interest. All right. Um, you know, I'm put it on this side right now so you guys can see, um, you know, there's plenty and plenty of open interest on deep in the money contracts, right? None of these, there's no like open interest on deep in the money contracts here. So a lot of people made money on these and these are all worth hundreds and hundreds of dollars versus the calls, right? So you have to realize they still want to steal your money if you think they're trying to get you to buy puts as well. And that's what happened with these one puts, you know, most likely these one puts are going to expire worthless on Friday, unless, you know, XL fleet drops 80 cents in the next you know week. Um, so the only thing that I would recommend if you wanted to get a put play um, would honestly be like these May ones, right? They're a little more expensive, which is, in my opinion, a little bit better, right? Because now you don't have to buy 100 contracts to spend $500, right? Um, if you buy the May two puts, what you can do is actually, um, you know, you can just buy 10 contracts and spend $500, right? Um, the reason I like these, okay, again, is the open interest. There's not really any volume on them today. Um, and the reason being for that is because, I mean, you know, it's going up, right? It's up 6.78% today, right? So, you know, there's not going to be a lot of people rushing to short something while it's going up, right? A lot of times the trend is your friend. People are buying into calls, call options when it's going up. But these are going to be relatively safe if you think that it's going to go lower, right? These are already in the money, um, you know, so they they already are, you know, basically worth some value. And if XL Fleet drops lower to a dollar eighty, a dollar seventy, a dollar sixty, a dollar fifty, um, these two strike options will, you know, see a slight increase, um, you know, in their in their money as the more XL drops. All right, so. Um, you know, again, not financial advice. Obviously, I'm telling you guys both sides. All right. Um, I'm, you know, showing you if, you know, for March, I would recommend the two strike calls if you're bullish. Um, for May, I would recommend the uh, two strike puts uh, if you're bearish. All right. Um, that's my opinion. Earnings is coming up very soon. So, um, you know, typically you do see um, a big reaction either heading into earnings, right? You can either get a pre-anticipatory uh, pre rally um, or, you know, we could tank on earnings, right? That's, you know, very common, all right? Especially uh, this year, um, the year of 2022, earnings has been a hit or miss, right? Um, 
some stuff either destroys and some stuff, you know, Facebook, some stuff, you know, Facebook recorded the biggest market cap loss ever in a single day, a single trading day. I mean, billions and billions of dollars wiped out from Facebook um, on an earnings day. So, um, you know, keep that in mind. Thank you guys for watching this video. Uh, I know it's kind of long, but, uh, you know, I kind of just want to give you guys an insight to my head sometimes versus just uh, only showing you guys the chart real quick. Um, you know, I kind of just broke this one down for you and kind of gave you some insight on to uh, how I would trade it and what I would be looking for. Um, yeah, that's about it.